Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Alyssa Threadgill, and I'm a writer for The Nocturnal. It's a pleasure to meet you all, and I greatly enjoyed your contributions to the documentary. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So I wanted to talk to Victor. In the documentary, you mentioned how you constantly think about the concept of legacy. So I wanted to know, what does it mean for you to be the result of these men here um, and so many others who paved the way for you and made it even remotely possible for you to be all that you are today? How does that feel? Wow, thank you for um, saying that because it's so true, Alyssa, that to know that I am connected to that legacy there's a lot of things that makes me feel one is humble to be connected to this line of amazing accomplishment and achievement. Um, not just messaging, but accomplishment, real world accomplishment, even if that story wasn't always easily available or easily made public. I think back on it, it reminds me how important it is for me to read and understand history. Um, I'm also extremely grateful. I'm sorry, I'm just giving you stream of conscious, but I'm extremely grateful that I can actually go out and hug and, and, and talk to Ed and learn from the primary source. Uh, and so I'm really grateful for that. Um, and then I think about myself now, and it is also a reminder to me to continue to put my best foot forward because I represent my mom and my my dad, but also them. I represent Ed, I represent Leland, I represent uh, Bernard Harris, I represent Mae Jemison, and I represent NASA, and I represent at 330 million Americans. And so it actually puts a new vigor into what I am connected to now. And then I also think about the next generation and those young people, and I'm really adamant about trying to find and identify my replacement. The one thing I think about more than anything in my current job as a human space explorer is making sure I can find a hundred people to replace me so that one of them may have a chance to. And so I am vigilant about making sure somebody can replace me when I, when I retire, but I, it's, it's um, a humbling legacy to be connected to. And then I'm also trying to make sure that that younger generation knows that it's out there and that they have these great stories to build on that. This is a foundation for them to, to climb to the top of and then take it to the next level. Absolutely. And it's incredible how, the future is, you know, so close and there's so many people that are in school now to be in your place and it's incredible. Um, and I also found it really touching, as you were saying, that you had a motivation to keep all of the living Black astronauts together and in touch and kind of keep that legacy alive and keep everybody, you know, together. So how does it feel for you to be a bit of a catalyst for this reunion and bringing these people back together after so long and making those connections? You know, uh, Leland is too gracious in uh, making it sound like I did that. I think we all needed that at that time. And, and I think COVID was context. We still needed it. it. COVID reminded us how important human connection is. And so it wasn't just because of COVID. We needed it because we're humans. We're social primates and our DNA tells us that we are better collective and we are better together. And so I am just grateful that that timing worked out. My family and I got such amazing support. We tried really hard to be that kind of support for Jessica Watkins and paying it forward. And, and this is just another facet of this really am amazing legacy. And uh, and I, I think it... Um, it's a, a special small group that has a, a shared context, a shared awareness that not many people have. And so I think that we can support each other in a way that not many other people can. And I think that is just incredibly valuable. And so, you know, I see and talk to Leland and Bernard and Ed more than a lot of people. And I just, I'm really grateful that I can, that I can reach out to them and, and, uh, and that we have this vehicle to support one another. Absolutely. And I wanted to talk to you about the launch at the end of the year, because that's super exciting and historic. Um, I can't imagine the pride that you must feel and being chosen for this. And I wanted to know, how are you preparing for that right now? What is that process like? And what are you most excited to discover? Because nobody's been to the moon in 50 years. It's really exciting. Yeah, Aly Alyssa, Artemis is a really amazing opportunity for us to go back to the moon sustainably and responsibly uh, and to, to have our own moonshots, our generation's shot at the moon. 
um, not just as a, a figure of speech, but as a physical accomplishment. And so honestly, what I think about is getting to the other side of it. The thing I'm looking forward to the most, and I'm not being sarcastic, is splashdown because it means everything else was successful. People want to know what I'm going to feel around the moon, and I'll tell you after I feel it. I'm, I don't think a whole lot about that. I'm not concerned about making a speech or it is incredibly humbling, but it's not humbling because I get to go on you know, late night TV shows and talk about Artemis. It's humbling because I know how complicated and how risky space missions are. And actually having done one before, the, 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 the fantasy and romanticism of it is still there. It's a great privilege and I love the opportunity that we have, but I also know how hard we and our corporate partners and our international partners and our, our scientists and engineers and financial people are working to make it possible. And uh, you may have heard today, we actually announced today a, a delay until September of now 2025. That's still not that far away, and we have a lot of work to do until then, but the crew will continue to train. Uh, we're working hard to make our mission a reality, and, and we're going to uh, continue to be ready. This crew will be ready when the hardware and the team are ready. Uh, and once we get back, you ask me that question again, I may have a different perspective for you, but <laughs> I try to, I try hard not to think too much about you know, it because like like today, the, the change in launch date can really start to play with your emotions if you have too high expectations. So right now I'm focused on solving the problems in front of me and learning and working with my crew and our ground team uh, to continue to advance NASA and our nation's missions and our global partnerships mission of getting humans on to, to the moon and eventually onto Mars successfully so we can get home safe. Yes, that's a great way to look at it, especially the way our world is and all the changes. So that's very exciting. Um, I wanted, Leland, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, how you mentioned Black futurism in the documentary and the importance of people being able to see how Black history has strong ties to space exploration. So I wanted to know, how do you feel about the current progress being made incorporating people of color into science and engineering careers and what do you hope to see in the future? That's a great question, Alyssa. And I, I think uh, Victor alluded to it earlier. It's like he wants to fly in space, go to the moon so that people can see what our mission possible is, not just for him, but for everyone. And, and that we need diversity. We need diverse people coming together because when we have a diverse crew, a diverse solution, we get the best results. It's been proven scientifically. And so I think, you know, as we go forward with the Afronauts, with everyone that's part of this Artemis mission, with Ed Dwight maybe flying in space one day, um, we want everyone to see what is possible and to do it with love and with joy and with humanity working together as, as one big family. And, you know, as you said, you know, there are lots of things going on in the world today. There's a lot of division, a lot of divisiveness. But I think when we come together to solve big problems, that's when we show what we're capable of as, as human beings. And that's one of the things that space does. It brings people from all around the world, people that used to fight against each other, working together, and we, we depend on each other. Like when I was on the space station in 2008, it was African-American, Asian-American, French, German, Russian, the first female commander breaking bread at 17,500 miles per hour while listening to Sade's smooth operator. So you talk about Sade in space with all of these people and we're all eating and grooving and working together to solve problems. And Sunron, Earth, Wind and Fire and Octavia Butler and all of these, these things that we've consumed as from a cultural standpoint have led all of us to know inside, even if we didn't know, you know, in our, in our, in our conscious, I mean, we knew subconsciously that these things were capable of being done by us, but it just takes us to see someone like Victor, or Ed, or me, or you know uh, Stephanie Wilson, or Jeanette Epps, who's flying in February, going to the going to the space station for six months, just to see that will kick that subconscious into consciousness and say, "I can do this too." Oh, that's incredible, and it's so great to hear you explain that, and you know that's a great song too. I have to say. <laughs> the operator. Yeah. And Ed, I, I loved hearing your story and I was, fe I was feeling some kind of way about it because I really wished I had heard it before because it's just so incredible. And it's so great to see you, you know, being able to talk about it and share and be an inspiration for everyone. But what really caught my eye was 
you mentioned how you were in your 40s and you weren't aware of who Harriet Tubman was. And I thought that was very interesting about how the education system works in our country and how there are so many missing gaps and how so many of us miss our own history when we really should know it. But I thought it was interesting because I wondered what did it mean to you contributing to this documentary, knowing that most traditionally educated people may not know your story, but would really benefit from hearing it. I think it's an interesting connection. Well, um, I, I've got to thank Alina uh, for being so thoughtful uh, about bringing this story to, to, to light. Uh, I, I want to take the time that I have here to talk about uh, Victor Glover. That sounds a little bit crazy, but uh, I, I, I've had a lot of time to sit down and figure, uh, figure out, you know, what makes a Victor Glover? Uh, and, and Victor had talked about it, uh, bringing people along and educating people. Uh, and, and, and I've sat down in my quiet times and after I've got to, I gotten to know Victor and, and what pieces do you put together to create a Victor Glover who was so humble and so smart and so educated and so brave and so enterprising and so giving. How do you get the combination of that? Uh, I've thought about that a lot. Uh, and, and this guy came along to, to solve the, the puzzle in my head because I'd been thinking about that quite a long time. But Victor Glovers don't happen uh, easily. They're, they're, they're not out there just you know, waiting to be picked up and developed. Uh, and so all the stuff that we're doing in the education part of this thing, uh, it, the hardest thing in the universe, uh, I find it out from, from being uh, probably a notable black sculptor, uh, that is how difficult it is uh, uh, to, to, to have people that, can, that, have to, that have either purposefully or not so pur purposefully touched all the bases that you need to be highly successful and confident and confident. And this guy's got it all. Uh, uh, and and, and, and the I'm sure he's uh, going to have more, a lot more frustration training uh, uh, after he goes to the moon and Mars and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> going back to train a lot of, a little, a little bitty Victor Glovers. And, and, and how difficult this, that's going to be unless we get our, get our acts together and start to, uh, telling people uh, this broad base of knowledge and, and, and understanding and listening and imitating uh, uh, people that are successful. And it's so hard to find those kind of people that will share like Victor does, because a lot of people, they, they, they find themselves successful and they screw the, I got mine, so screw the rest of you guys. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna share what I got. And so I, I've spent a lifetime trying to develop uh, uh, competent sculptors to tell the history, to, to, to make history as important enough for them to tell uh, and, and to do it competently. And so uh, I'd like to, my words uh, to, to, to redirect to, to, uh, to Victor and his successes, but uh, how hard it's going to be. And if I'm still living, I sure would like to help him do this recruiting to have, uh, to, to put the word out about getting people to open their brains and minds uh, to, to other things, because it takes a lot of other side things that you need to know and, and, and control to, to become a Victor Club, okay? And, uh, and but, but, but letting them know that it's one thing to have all the science and one thing to have all the math, but, uh, but the thing to make a Victor Club is, uh, it, it's a lot of love and a lot of compassion and a lot of sharing and wanting uh, a better place for us to be living in here. Uh, and so um, I, my, kudos to, uh, uh, you know, to the main man, <laughs> oh. uh, you know, this in the spotlight today, uh, he, he's going to get, I told him already that I wanted to be his campaign manager when he went for, ran for president. <laughs> After he gets through it, all this great stuff that he's doing. <laughs> so, 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 so anyway, that's my contribution to the conversation that we're having here. Uh, uh, you know, I, I learned a lot. Uh, I did, I did my job. Uh, that, that was part of the conversation that was needed. 
uh, to get out of the fantasy of a space trek into the reality of people flying in space. And mm -hmm. there had to be a transition point there to, 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 to bring some of that uh, into reality. Uh, and I, I just happened to be the kind of, I, I don't want to call myself a guinea pig, but somebody had to play the role. Uh, I would have been better if I had had a lot of company, four or five other brothers in the process and sisters in the process to make that happen, but it didn't happen that way. So uh, so anyway, thanks uh, for, for putting me on with these two great guys. And uh, uh, I, I, I hope tonight goes really well. Thanks. Thank you, Ed. And you're in the spotlight, though. This spotlight is on you, my friend. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Thank you for those kind words.